Biobalance HealthCast episode 230, What Kind of Women Seek Testosterone Pellet Therapy? Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. I'm Brett Newcomb and this is Dr. Kathy Maupin. And we are going to be talking this week about perceptive change that is coming, has partially come, and still needs to come some more within the uh, medical community about testosterone in women. Uh, Kathy belongs to a couple of international organizations of doctors who are focusing themselves towards change in medicine, change in delivery systems, change in understanding, change in research, change in outcomes. Uh, they're real. Uh, not so much non-conservative because I think all doctors. No, they're are ahead of their time. But they're, they're ahead of their time, and they they're frustrated by the existing status quo and the inability mm-hmm. to help populations with what's currently available. And so they're pushing mm-hmm. for change, uh, change in research, change in medicine that's available, change in regulations. They're and changing. The, they're changing to preventive medicine. Yes, they're changing to replacing hormones for people to grow old with, uh, I don't mean uh, growing old as in looking old, or fit, right. but growing the more years, yeah. the reality of aging in a healthy way, instead of they see this huge population of people who can't get around, who can't take care of themselves, who can, who require all this money and help, and that could be prevented in many people by doing preventive measures to prevent heart disease, to prevent all the things that come with hormone loss to prevent the lack of muscle mass and bone that has to do with testosterone. So they address all these issues, nutrition, all of the things you can do to help patients live out their lives in a very healthy manner. Mm -hmm. So that's their interest. Their interest is, it's all about age management and uh, learning how to prevent illness. So one of the things that is in their interest is hormones and Testosterone is one of the hormones they talk about all the time for women, and they have speakers from all over the country, and sometimes, and they have several speakers that are recurrent that come from Europe as well. Yes. And so we hear about all of the different ways and forms of hormone that they give, how they deliver it, and it seems to me that that there's a a group of women who are in general the population who will probably embrace this Mm -hmm. and by class that they they're aware and educated they're probably upper middle class upper class now now because they're they're the ones that have the discretionary opportunities right and they have the money they have the money and education and the time to look they're not just surviving they're looking for something to make them feel better they've been healthy in general throughout their lives because Everybody who comes to see me says, I was just fine. Everything was great. And then I hit a wall. They want their health back. So that's another thing. But they're also assertive enough to go seek things. Say something's wrong. And say, and I'm not going to oh, no, accept that. Wrong. That's the way it is. And they say, I'm not willing to accept it. You know, you I know. always tell people that I've got a whole office full of type A patients, Absolutely. which is true. Because yeah. they're the ones that are on the cutting edge and they're seeking help. Going back to the conferences, there are literally thousands of doctors there hearing constant speeches and seminars and discussion panels on topics of all kinds of new age medicine. When you were asked to deliver a talk at one of these conferences, it was because you had written a book on testosterone and women, Mm -hmm. which opens kind of a new page for them to consider. So when, when we were there together, a lot of these doctors would cluster around you and there would be sort of spontaneous discussions about what kind of things they need to know about testosterone and women, mm-hmm. especially in terms of the kind of women for whom the, these are issues, mm-hmm. the kinds of delivery systems that are available, uh, problems or outcomes of each delivery mm-hmm. system, uh, medical thinking about dosage Mm -hmm. or blood level tests, uh, FDA regulations and off label usage Mm -hmm. and non. So, so the doctors are trying to conceptualize and understand. The reason Mm -hmm. I bring this up is that as a result of those conversations, you have begun a training program for Mm -hmm. physicians who want to learn the things that you know, because it isn't about 
these mass-produced companies that just go out and shoot up everybody with testosterone. Right. It's one not size about fits that. all, one dosage fits all, one delivery system fits all. Doesn't work that way. There, there has to be a knowledge base where you can troubleshoot and balance uh, goals and side effects. It's not as easy as it looks. I mean, it isn't just oh, let's put some pellets in you, right. which is how some doctors who aren't trained yes. do it, and then they're it's fraught with disaster. They they all end up at my office going, why did this? Why did my pellets pop out? All of them, and why did I have an infection? And why did I? And why was I given this dose and I didn't feel it? In general, the doses um, are too low. So people go, ah, none of my symptoms are better. But the doctor goes, oh, that's the dose. See ya. Well, and, and it's so, not that's not a, exactly. the way to treat patients. So I'm trying to teach doctors how to how to listen to the patient, listen to their complaints, and as as close as I can get to help them resolve all of their medical issues well, in a way, one hormone or another or some, some other right. type. You look at the holistic issue, and mm -hmm. you're also looking at the labs, the blood tests, their medical history, mm -hmm. their lifestyle issues. Mm -hmm. I see it more anecdotally. I mean, I remember uh, an elderly black lady, very attractive woman in her 70s, mm -hmm. approaching you for mm -hmm. a conversation, and she's saying, you know, I want all these benefits that you're talking mm -hmm. about, about stronger bones and more energy mm -hmm. and more vitality and more uh, awareness and better thinking, but I don't want because I'm a single woman in my 70s mm -hmm. with strong religious values, I don't want this uncomfortable sexual percolation. So can you detail, uh, develop a cocktail for me mm -hmm. that will bring me these but not give me that to fool with? And those are that's the a kinds dosage of issue. Questions. Yes, but some people even on a low dose get their sex drive back. So yeah. sometimes there are you can you if you want all of those good things and to resolve all of this group of symptoms. And I would sometimes, argue that this other is a good thing. That too, I know. But, but she didn't want the discomfort. I know. I yeah. understand that. And everybody's different, yeah. you know, of what they want when they come to see me. Right. So, um, but there's a, there's a difference I noticed at the, at these meetings throughout the country of what type of delivery system is successful in these different places. Now I've used all of them. I've used creams, gels. I mean, for my patients since the eighties, creams, gels, vag tabs, shots. I mean, sublinguals. We've, sublinguals. We've done it all. Yeah. And we've t tested blood levels. And I found that I, don't, I stopped using sublinguals when I found that nobody got better. Maybe not, not nobody. One in one in a hundred may get better, but the other ninety nine did not. It's not worth using something that has that low a success rate because they had no blood level of testosterone. So they would take it on, under the tongue. They'd get their estrogen, but not testosterone. So I stopped using that. The creams were too iffy. If you were cold, you didn't absorb them. If you had terrible blood flow to your skin, you, like you're older, you didn't absorb them. So if you had, if you were sweating, issues. you absorbed them all. And then I had also compliance issues. I had women who I would give them testosterone for a month. They'd slather it all over their body and say, I'm growing hair everywhere. <laughs> I mean, wherever you slather. And I've run out and it's only been three days. Right. And whether, whether you, and, and her level was off the charts. And I'm like, no, you know, I have a control issue on that. Yeah. I don't want to give somebody something that they can misuse. Right. So that's when I stopped doing gels and creams. That I thought, that I mean, several. We had several circumstances like that. So it takes a lot of experience and years of doing this, years and years of going through all of the delivery systems. Our book that we wrote together, Secret Female Hormone, addresses all the different issues, all the pros and cons. But we found that women in California and on the West Coast and all the doctors from there felt much more comfortable with the patient having control of the dosing. They write the prescription. The patient can change the dosage a little bit here and there. I don't feel comfortable with that. And also, I think my my view is that that could easily not work for many people. And then you wouldn't know why it didn't work. Right. Maybe they didn't take it. Maybe, maybe they took too much. Skip three days. Take take three doses in one day to, to average it out. Uh -huh. I mean, people play those games, and then it doesn't work the way you expected it to work. Uh, so, and I'm not saying everyone in, in on the West Coast believes that, but they have a lot of doctors that are doing this and 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 successfully. Yes. And their patients wouldn't want to do pellets like I do. Well, I you, want something that's a no-brainer. I mean, myself and my patients want to have it put in. Don't think about it for four months. Feel better. Have it. You know, just right. That's it. You don't have to do anything. It's just like your ovaries. So back. the way your pellets work, you put them inside the fat tissue of the lower back of the hip for females. And then that's 
seal off. It's, it heals up. Mm -hmm. When you make a tiny slice, you put them in, and the skin heals. So they can't access it. They can't change it. They can't play with it. They can't put them in. They can't take them out. And they it, can't and it creates mess with the dust. On demand reservoir based on your metabolism and your lifestyle mm -hmm. that provides you the balancing chemical uh, hormone that you need mm -hmm. as you need it. Right. Your blood flow, your cardiac output, how much you exercise determines how much you use up. And I have to adjust for people who exercise a lot. And I have to adjust down for people who are sedentary or over 70. Not always, but usually over 70. Because they there's more sitting being done. They're, they're not as so, active. So you've been doing this for more than a dozen years. We've had thousands of patients. and you've The built. pellets I've been doing more than a dozen years. But I've been right. doing it ever, all the bioidentical hormones since the 80s. So okay. 29 years. So... But the pellets for a dozen years, because you've evolved through all of the delivery iterations mm -hmm. and identified the problems with each set in, in terms of looking at the balance of your patient, not so much just a unique individual mm -hmm. who's sitting in front of you who says, well, I want to control all this, so give me creams. And, and I, don't, I don't tend to do that because that literally... I, I don't want to handle all the complications of that. Well, that's what I was going to say. And when you, there's you, something you better, you've evolved your practice away from everything but pellets. Right, because it's the best. It's actually the most physiologic with the fewest risk factors if you do it right. And so, my th then the next step for me is I need to teach doctors to do it right. Right. Not just say, oh yeah, have fun. I take can some put pellets. pellets in. That's an easy procedure. And it it's has, an, easy it is procedure. an easy procedure. It's it's not difficult. That part's the easy part. It's all of the other the the troubleshooting and I'd say every at least once a week, my nurse nurses and nurse practitioners bring in charts and we sit down and go over why is why is this not working? Yes. What was going on? Or or people perceive it's not working, but they forget that they came in with twenty symptoms, and nineteen are working. Yeah, when nineteen it stops are hurting, gone. You forget about it. <laughs> and one's still a problem. So right. when we go over it all, they go, "Oh yeah, I really do feel better." Mm -hmm. I, all of those are gone, but that one thing. So then we have to see if we can address that one thing. Well, you take pictures too, don't you? So yeah. they can see the change. What they in used themselves. to look like. Yeah, yeah it, it here's what you look like perception. when you came in a year ago. Right. And here's what you look like today. And in general, even if they haven't lost pounds, they've lost size. Yeah. And they've lost swelling and they've lost and they they look healthier, they have better blood flow to their face. Right. So in general, their pictures look quite different. So at the conference where you gave the talk and and I was privileged to observe mm -hmm. that process, you were approached by a female doctor who's who's primarily a researcher and an endocrinologist who at doesn't Yale. who who doesn't practice uh, Except outside on of the, a daily basis, outside uh, with, of the medical school. Yeah, and her focus was on the absolute statement that you just cannot give people that much testosterone. Talk a little bit about what she meant and and how how and why you disagree. She she was talking about uh, total testosterone measurements in the mm -hmm. bloodstream, and when you give people pellets, they. And, and then they go get a blood test. Mm -hmm. The blood test will measure total testosterone. Mm -hmm. But that isn't what you're looking for. I'm looking for the active or the free testosterone. Free level. testosterone. So, so explain the difference. Okay, so to total testosterone for women is about a tenth of what men's mm -hmm. is. And our free testosterone, the part that's working, is even less because we have very, we have less active form of testosterone. So, she was looking at testosterone levels. I don't believe it was about free testosterone. So you could have a really high total and a very small amount of active testosterone for a particular patient. Mm -hmm. And you would, it doesn't matter what the total is. Your body, it's invisible to your body. It's not doing anything. It's bound up and inactivated. It's just that little tiny percentage that's working. So if you took the same, like, if you had a testosterone level of 300, which could be in the male range. Mm -hmm. It's not doing the same thing as in the male range. We don't have the same receptors. Right. We don't have as many receptors. And we don't have as much active for that. We have a tiny fraction of what so we have. So your total of 300, your active available testosterone might be 30. Right. And her issue was not that she, she uses creams, only creams, vaginal creams. Okay. So... I have a problem with that. Messy going to the office. You can't. You have to use them multiple times a day. I mean, to me, that's that's an issue. It's an issue for my patients as well. Mm -hmm. But also, she was giving the lowest possible dose she could give. 
Right. And it wasn't about the patients getting better. It was about what the blood level was. Right. So she had a blood level in her mind. She was trying to achieve that. I achieve over that. My results are great. Well, but then, and her and she did, wasn't even interested in her, in the outcome. She was interested in the numbers, and, and that's that is what one of the current frustrating issues in medicine. Their doctors seem to be A or B. A is focused on data driven uh, forms, tests, outcomes, which means you research. didn't even have to be in front of the doctor. I mean, they're just at looking their, at your. Papers, you go to your doctor and they like just this. look at their computer the whole time. Yeah. And they're they're flipping through pages and charts to check numbers, and, and they say, "Oh, you're you're." Cholesterol is 67. and, and I just say that's not great medicine. That is what you say regularly. Instead, what do you say? I say you have to deal with each patient individually, and you have to talk to the patient and find out what they're feeling and say, the big question is, are you better? Yes. Then if your doctor doesn't ever ask you, are you better? then you've got a problem because that doctor doesn't really get it. You need to feel better. You need to be better. Your numbers could look like anything because, honestly, in, in all these hormones, there's all these steps between the point where you produce the hormone or are given the hormone, it gets in your blood, and then it has to change over steps of enzyme steps before it actually activates the cell. You could have a block in there, but your numbers look great. I don't want to be the best looking corpse in the box. I want to be alive and functioning and working. Well, right. And so, if all but you my want to numbers, be good looking too. So, well, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> but, if, but if all my numbers, I mean, I mean, in terms of statistical representation, if my Honestly, doctor comes to my funeral, he looks and he says, "But your testosterone levels are good, your blood levels are good, your cholesterol levels are good. Why did you die? You know? Yeah. And yeah. I'm, I mean, it's I like to that. Say, there's something wrong. You know, I'm right. having headaches or I'm having a stomach ache or I'm, my bones are, I feel brittle and I'm older and I'm afraid to walk because I don't have any balance and can you help me? And they go, well, we'll give you something for dizziness. Yeah. But that doesn't fix why you don't have balance. You don't have balance because you don't have muscle mass. You don't have muscle in general. Yeah. You could be dizzy, but you don't have muscle mass, so you can't balance yourself. I mean, I witnessed some, yeah, I, I witnessed some people trying to snorkel when we were at yeah. Ra our um, Rachel's, my, my daughter's wedding, and they were trying to snorkel, and they did, they were older, and they didn't have the muscle mass in their legs to even stand up in water that was about that deep. Yeah. They just kept Could falling down. Yeah. They couldn't get their fins on. They couldn't get, the, you know, they couldn't go out into the deep water. And, and actually stay afloat long enough to get everything put together. So they just got out. They crawled out, actually. So, I mean, that is not what we want. We, we don't need a drug for being dizzy. We need, we need something that gives us our muscle mass back. Right. And that's what testosterone does. That's the whole, you have to go back to the problem that started this all. And, all the, and many symptoms are started by lack of testosterone. So that's what we're... We're trying to Spread help people make the right decisions. There are lots of ways to take testosterone, and I can tell you, because I've done blood levels on all of them, that vaginal testosterone for women gives you a much higher total testosterone than pellets. And it goes way up every day like this. And women don't feel good when it goes up and down every day. Yes. We're, we need a, a same dose baseline. every day. Yeah. So that's what pellets do. So that's another reason I choose it. And then I troubleshoot ahead of time. And this particular doctor, I'm almost ready to like give her name because she said all these things. Uh, this particular doctor said, you should never trouble have to troubleshoot. You shouldn't give that much. Well, every drug that we give, you have to deal with the side effects. So that would mean we would always underdose everybody with diabetes. Their sugar would be out of out of control. So that <laughs> you you can't do it that way you have to bring people back to normal you have to bring them back to how they used to feel how how they actually used to operate and that's that's what we're trying to suggest now i'm not saying that creams wouldn't work for somebody but there nobody's going to be checking your blood levels if you're on creams because they don't want to see that high testosterone right. Right, and but it depends on when you put the cream. It doesn't mean the same. It doesn't mean the same thing either, because yeah. nobody's feeling that much testosterone. The levels in the blood don't always mean the same thing. Right. So, so, so at the end of the day, the message is that there are divisions in the medical community, and for this particular population of women, type A personality, educated, disposable resources, who are not used to having their lives be out of control, mm -hmm. and are not willing to settle for an answer that says that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for a physician who's ready to provide uh, 
effective, efficacious responses to those concerns for you. That they're hard to find. They're hard on the ground to find. So Kathy has started uh, a training program for physicians who are interested in being able to to put themselves in a position to treat these issues in these populations. Our next training program is scheduled for July of this year, mm -hmm. and you can get in touch with us if you're interested, or your physician. If you can get your physician to be interested, have them get in touch with us about the training program that we offer. It will teach you the importance of testosterone balance in women, the delivery system issues, and especially the troubleshooting of problems that occur that requires a level of expertise because that's what you have to offer. That's right. And I would love it if there were people all across the country that could who, had this who could do this yes. for their patients. Absolutely. So uh, read our book, uh, Secret Female Hormone. Uh, there's information there. We'll post information on the, on the web page or uh, the site uh, to say how to get in touch with us. But talk to your physician, see if you can get them to be interested in learning more about this. Thank, Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.